Hello students and welcome to this video for Excel Chapter 3 Capstone Exercise. You're going to be turning in your textbook to page 595. Page 595 and I'll read the information while you're turning there. You're an analyst for the airline industry and you created a workbook <coughs> that lists overall airline arrival statistics for several years. In particular, you listed the percentage and number of on-time arrivals, late arrivals, canceled flights, and diverted flights based on the information provided by the Bureau of Transportation Statistics. You want to create charts and insert spark lines that show the trends to discuss with airline and airport managers. So first thing we're going to do, major header here, is insert and format these spark lines. So step A uh, says we need to open up this file, Excel Chapter 3 Capstone one arrivals and of course we're gonna save it here with that different name so file um, save as browse <clears throat> make sure you save it to the correct folder do it right away at the beginning so that way you don't have to change it and risk the chance of something getting messed up so of course last name first and then I save And then step B, it says insert line spark lines in range G4 through G7 using data for the five years. So G4 through G7, it says, and information from the last five years. So you notice it's only three rows um, that I have selected here. So I'm going to go to the insert tab. I'm going over to the spark lines group. And of course, it says to choose line, spark lines. So I'm going to click on that. We do have this uh, right location range. Oh, you know what? Hang on, let me um, update this. It's through G7. So now I have the right amount. I'm gonna click over here um, and then choose, it says for the five years. So pretty much going under 2010, clicking and holding down and then dragging all the way across here to 2014, um, the 25%. So you can see I've got B4 through F7 for my data range, and then G4 through G7 for my location um, range, where they're going to be placed. I click OK. You can see it comes up like this, and this is how it should look. If yours looks different, make sure you uh, go back and check um, what you selected, because you probably selected the wrong thing. Then step C, it says display the high points and the low points of the spark line. So we're going to go to the show group. We've got spark line tool still selected, the design tab. And we're going here, high point, let's check that, and low point. And you can see it displays that way. Then it says, change the high point marker color to green. So I'm going up here, my style group, going to marker color, click on that. Uh, it says we're changing high point, so I'm hovering over high point. And then it says green, so that's going to be a standard color. This one right here, green. And then look at that, it almost looks like Christmas colors just in time for December. All right, next thing we've got is create a pie chart. So it says we want to focus on the arrival percentages for 2014. So we're gonna create a pie chart that'll help people visualize um, the breakdown of all the operations for that year. So after we create the chart, we're gonna move it says and things like that. Step A, it says select range A4 through A7. So I'm gonna click on on time arrival A4. I'll make sure I got that right through A7. That's good. Then I'm going to hold down Control because I also need to select F4 through F7. So my two groups right there, F4 through F, or excuse, F4 through F7, A4 through A7. Let me zoom in a little bit more as well, make it more visible. <clears throat> then step B, it says create a pie chart. So I'm going up to the Insert tab. I'm going to go over here to the Charts group. Click on that, I'm choosing 2D Pi. So it should look like this if you selected the right information. Then what I'm gonna do is I need to move it. So I'm gonna click on Move Chart in the Location Group over to the far right. I click on New Sheet. <coughs> and then I'm gonna type in for the name, Pie Chart. Very simple. I push Enter. It's gonna move it to that new worksheet for me and it looks something like this. Then it says change the chart title I'm going to go up here to 2014 Flight Arrivals. <coughs> 2014 Flight Arrivals. 
Make sure your chart title stays in the correct spot. Some of you, it's been, you're either moving it over or for some reason it's getting moved over. Um, make sure it's in the right spot. You lose points if it's not if it's off center. Also, two, make sure you spell things right and capitalize the right letters. That's all part of the grade is making it look like, <clears throat> making it look professional, and of course making it match the book in this video. All right, we're going to add and format some chart elements. So that's our next header. It says apply style 12 to the chart style um, for the pie chart. So we're going to go to style number 12. It looks like I have about eight in each row, so it looks like it's this last one. So I hover over it, style 12, and we click on that. Then it says format the chart title with a blue font color. So I need to click on this. It looks like I already have the chart title selected, so um, I'm just clicking along the box, the outer edge here to make sure. I'm going to go to the Home tab. I'm going to the font fill color, and of course it says blue, so we're going down to standard colors and going with blue. <coughs> Then it says, C, position the legend between the chart title and the plot area. The chart title and the plot area. So um, if I go to the design tab for chart tools, so you can see my chart still selected. Um, and then I'm actually going to do add chart element, legend. And let's see what it looks like at the top. Yeah, there we go. So select top. And so I'll show it one more time. You add chart elements, you go down to legend, and then you select top just like that. All right, so I have it that way. And then it says add data labels to bet best fit position and display. So I click add chart element, I go to data labels, and then I choose best fit right here. And I click it. And of course, you can see um, they're right there. So that's good. <coughs> Then step E, we're on the next column here, the page. Apply bold to the data labels. So I'm going to click on one. You'll notice it selected all of them. I'm going to hold down control and push B. That applies bold. And then of course it says 12 point font. So I'm going to the home tab. I'm increasing it to 12 point font. I still have it selected. You'll notice it adjusts a little bit um, for these ones because of course it says best fit. Um, because if you put it over the center on this slice, it's going to be very difficult to see. Step F, it says format the cancel data point. So cancel the course, meaning the gray one right here. The cancel data point um, with dark red fill color. So I'm going to click on it once. You'll notice it's selecting all the data points here. I click on it one more time, and you'll see that it's selected just this one right here. I'm going to go over here to the paintbrush. And I have a couple other options here, but you know what? Actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to right click here, choose Format Data Point. It's going to come up here in the task pane. There's always a couple ways you can get to things. Um, so sometimes I'll try one way. If that one doesn't seem the best, um, I'll do another one. So we're doing that, and we need to click on the paint bucket right here. We're going to choose Fill because we're going to change it to, of course, solid color, um, and we're doing dark red fill. So that's going to be. I go down to color, click on the arrow here, go to standard colors and dark red. It's that first one. You can see it changed now my canceled one. And then it says we need to format late arrival as well. So I click on the orange one. That's late arrival. You can tell because of the legend. And you can see because we already had clicked once and then we clicked again, um, only this one is selected. If you see dots all around um, the different points, you need to go back and um, reselect it. But by clicking it here, it did the one. I click Solid Fill. I go here to the color arrow, and it says I need to change it to green. So down to standard colors, standard colors, excuse me. I click green. Get that uh, wonderful holiday colors in here. And then it says I need to explode the late arrival data point by 5%. So I'm going to go up here again. This is fill in line. We need to go to series options. In my series options, we have angle of first slice and, of course, point explosion. And it said we need to change it to 5%. So I'm just going to click after the 0. I push backspace, type in 5, push enter, and there we go. You can see there's that separation, uh, the explosion that's referring to. All right, now we're going to create and size a column chart. Column chart, keeping in mind that means up and down. Bar chart means left and right. So 
Let's go back to our arrivals worksheet. You can see it's, uh, I'm going to double click here so you can see this because I zoom in. Um, when you zoom in and out, sometimes it affects whether or not you can see that info. And I'm going to select here, it says create a col clustered column chart using the range A10 through F10. So I'm going to go to A10, which I believe is right here, A10 through F15. F15. So F15 is right here. I've selected all that information. You can see that. And it says, um, oh, excuse me, I'm going on to step B here. Um, let's move our mouse over it. You're going to see the quick analysis come up. We can choose charts. And then we need clustered column. Now, this is a bar chart right here. So we need to go over to the one that looks like this. So um, mine's, this is the, for me, it's the fourth one over. Um, for you, you want, it should be, but if it isn't, you just want to make sure it's going up and down because that means it's a column chart. So clustered column chart, I click on that, it's going to come up. It says edit the chart title to, so I'm going to click on this, and I'll show you up here in the box. We're going to be changing it to on time arrival and late flight arrivals. And I push enter, you can see it comes up. Step C, it says position the clustered column chart so that the top left corner is in cell A10. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to actually, I'm going to have to move it down a little bit and then I'm going to move my, uh, down a little bit on my worksheet here. So it says A20, this is A20 right about here, there you go, A20, and change the width to, so I'm going to go, you can see because my chart is selected, I can go up here, chart tools, I'm choosing format, I'm going over here to um, width, it says to just first, so I'm changing it from 5 to 5.75, I push enter. And then also my height for it, I need to adjust it to 3.5 and push enter. All right, and that's how it should look so far. If your information doesn't match up, it means you didn't select the data properly. Or that's usually it. Sometimes it may be something else, but that's usually the first thing um, you're going to check if it doesn't show up um, properly. If yours doesn't match, delete this chart, remake it. All right, format the column chart. So we just made our column chart. We're going to format. Step A, it says apply chart filters to remove the canceled, diverted, and total operations data. So let's click up here on chart elements. Oh, you know what? Let me, I believe actually it's chart filters. Excuse me. So click on chart filters. We got our different options here. And it says we need to remove the canceled one. So I uncheck the box. We need to remove diverted, so I uncheck that box, and also total operations, so I uncheck that box just by clicking on it. And then you'll notice it hasn't changed just yet. We need to apply it, so I click the apply button down here. Changes how my chart um, is looking. Then step B, it says select the value axis. Now the value axis is over here, it's these numbers. So I click on the number, you can see it comes up like this with a box around it. Then it says set 500,000 for the major unit. So I'm actually going to right click on the number. You'll notice I'm one of these numbers. It can't be in the white area. I'm going to choose the format axis. And you can see these options come up right here. It says for major unit, we're going down here. So units, major, right now it's 1.0 E6. We're going to set it to 500. So make sure you have five zeros. I'm going to push the enter button. And then it says um, select display the axis unit in millions. So display units right here, it's set to none. Let's choose millions. And then um, we are going to select the category. So I'm going to, I believe it's number down here. And here's category, it's set to custom. I'm going to click on the arrow. We're going to choose number format. So up here, number format with a one 
for decimal place. So I put in one, push enter, and you can see it shows up on my chart. Step C, add a primary vertical axis title number of flights. What well, I'm going to do that, I'm going to click on the design tab up here for chart tools. I'm going to choose add chart element. And then I'm going to go to axis titles. And I'm going for primary vertical right here. So I'm going to click on that, primary vertical, choosing number of flights. Remember, it doesn't show up till you push enter. So number of flights. That's step C. Step D, it says apply color to chart color to the chart. So apply color to chart color. So let's go to change colors. So color to chart color. Yeah, here we go. So they call it colorful palette um, two. So we're gonna select that. I think the name may have changed a little bit, um, but this should be the right color style. Then step E, apply the light gradient axis three accent three to fill the chart area. So I'm gonna move it up here to the blank area. You notice it says chart area when I hover over it, I click. It doesn't have anything else selected, which is good. I'm gonna go over here. So it says format chart area, we're gonna click the fill option. We're gonna choose gradient, because it's talking about gradient. Then we go down here and we're going to preset gradients. I'm gonna click on that. And then light gradient accent number three. So that's, uh, I'm gonna give you my magnifier here for a second to make sure I grab the right one. So it's, yep, right here, this one. You can see light gradient accent three. Let me bring my magnifier back up. All right, we have just one section left here before we finish. It says we need to finalize the workbook. So we're going to create a footer on each worksheet. So I'm going to hold down control, click on pie chart, and then uh, you can see it's grouped them together. I go to page layout tab. I go to the page setup group. I click the dialog box launcher. And then I go to the header and footer section because we're going to be creating that custom footer, choose custom footer. Remember in the left section, you put your name, like usual. Then we click in the center, we're choosing sheet name. And then we click on the right section and we choose file name. I'm gonna click OK. And click OK again. <coughs> I am gonna click on one of these other ones. It's gonna ungroup it. Um, but it says next step is to save and close the file. So I am going to save it um, and then show you here. Your one chart or worksheet, excuse me, should look like this. We have our pie chart. We have the different colors, uh, the different formats, your changes you made there. And then on your arrivals worksheet, you still have the information up here. Um, but now, we, of course, we have our spark line trends. And then down here, we have this chart make sure it matches if you need to push f7 do a spell check do that make sure the words are capitalized the letters that are supposed to be all those things so that way you can get a hundred percent on your grade for turning it in on time um, and doing it properly and that of course is how you complete excel chapter three capstone exercise